and uh, we'll go through sort of a general overview of the program, introduce it to uh, the major players, as well as uh, some fun facts about Augusta as well. So uh, as you guys probably know this by now, but it's, it's a good introductory slide since it's early in the timeline. The, uh, the timeline for the match this year is basically very similar to last year uh, with a couple weeks earlier in terms of programs offering interviews on October 22nd. And then uh, that's basically over a weekend, you guys decide to accept or decline interview offers. And then from late October to early January is going to be the virtual interview process again. And essentially the SAU, which governs the uh, process through the AUA, uh, has, has basically said that it's, another, it's going to be another virtual uh, process again this year. So rank list will be due uh, in mid-January on January 12th. And then the match day, like last year, will be February 1st. So we have set our interview days already. So if you want to mark your calendars down, we've been tweeting about this as well and we'll continue to do so. Um, but basically we're going to do uh, Saturday, October 30th, uh, Saturday, November 6th and Saturday, December 12th. <clears throat> so in case those of you on the line may not be familiar with the Southeast, we are in Augusta, Georgia, which basically is on the border of Georgia and South Carolina, right on the Savannah River, which is essentially the state line all the way down uh, to the Atlantic Ocean. And I'll bring this slide back up a little bit uh, later in the talk to sort of highlight some of the, the great things about this area too. So the Medical College of Georgia is actually the 13th oldest medical school in the United States. It was founded in 1828. And this is the old medical college building um, where uh, one, of the, one of the original buildings that the campus was built on downtown. It's often used for graduations and sort of events at this point, but uh, sort of a, a a classic icon that basically is based off of the MCG logo here. The, uh, the campus itself is, uh, is all part of Augusta University. And so this is the, uh, the main undergraduate campus, um, which is just up the street, probably about three miles from where we're sitting right now. And it merged, uh, we sort of merged everything under one umbrella in 2013. So there's 10,000 students uh, that attend Augusta University, including about uh, 1,000 full-time faculty. So in terms of the, the area uh, on a little broader scope, the health science campus, uh, which is, is downtown Augusta, is the is MCG, the, uh, the medical school, the dental school, the school of graduate studies and nursing and allied health. And so over the course of combining all of those, we have more than $50 million in NIH grant funding, uh, which puts us at about top 10 in the nation for funding per faculty member. In terms of the hospital details, in terms of where you guys will be working at, I'm sitting in the AU Health Medical Center, which is this 478-bed uh, tertiary level one trauma center. Uh, across the street, and I'll show you on a map in a minute, is the Charlie Norwood VA Medical Center, 156-bed hospital. And then uh, sort of adjacent to us is the Children's Hospital of Georgia at 150, 154 beds. So this is sort of a low-budget Google map of kind of where we're at right now. So I'm essentially sitting right here in, in the main medical center. And then you've got the VA just across the street right here. And then adjacent to the, the, uh, the main hospital is the uh, Children's Hospital right here. So you can see that everything is within about a five minute walk uh, all the way around. Down over here, we've got the Cancer Center in this area, some of the research buildings and some of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, undergraduate campus stuff like, the, um, sorry, excuse me, the, uh, the medical school campus stuff like the, the Greenblatt Library and uh, some of the auditoriums here. So we've all got everything pretty much in one, uh, one close location at this point. So this is a different view of the main hospital. Uh, this is the, uh, the connection between the VA and, and MCG, which we call the fistula. For those of you that may be up in the north, northeast, this is usually for when it gets cold outside. For us in the south, it's for when it gets too hot outside. Um, so we're able to get from one, um, one building to the next relatively easily. This is a view of our out, some of our outpatient medical uh, office buildings, which is sort of adjacent to the VA as well. This is the Children's Hospital of Georgia, which, uh, as I mentioned, is right next to the main hospital. It's a beautiful facility. Uh, it was designed about 20, 25 years ago. Uh, very friendly to surgeons. All the elevators and everything sort of gears towards the, the operating room. Um, it's one of the main children's hospitals in Georgia. Um, and we see a lot of patients from all over the state as well, the surrounding states as well. So it's a great facility. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about PEDS as we go through. The VA is sort of your standard VA. 
<clears throat> it's a very busy VA in terms of it, it, it collects patients from across the state uh, as well as South Carolina as well. Uh, it's a fabulous rotation for our residents uh, and it's a lot of um, a lot of resident run and and uh, autonomy at the VA as, as it is with most VA. So one of the things we usually mention is if you're looking for a program where you want to get a lot of hands-on experience, certainly a VA or a county hospital is, is one of the main things to probably look for, at least in our opinion. This is the new Dental College of Georgia building, which is probably about less than half a mile from us. Uh, the, the only state dental college in, this, in the state of Georgia. This is the new uh, Harold Harrison Educational Building uh, for the medical students. We have some of them on the line. It's one of the, it's one of the best medical facilities probably in the country with a lot of simulation, a lot of open, um, open sort of sunlight, big auditoriums, uh, really sort of a first class facility. This is the Georgia Cancer Center, uh, which is uh, also sort of just down the street from where we are. Um, this is the view of the adjacent uh, research building you can see here, and then we've got a walkway between the, um, the main cancer center clinic area and the research facility as well. So it's all very interconnected uh, in terms of the PhDs and the MDs. So this is a map of Columbia County and Richmond County. So right now we're sort of sitting right here on the right side of the map in Richmond County. That's where the hospital is. And so most of the growth in this area is actually moving out towards Columbia County. You can see Evans here. This is where a lot of our uh, faculty and some of our residents live. Um, some of the best school districts in the, in the entire state. And so Columbia County is really where we're taking the medicine to the folks in that county. And so um, we've got a, a surgery center out there, which we've had for about a year and a year and a half. We do some outpatient stuff there. We've also uh, have the Columbia County Hospital, uh, which is in the works for plans. It's, it's a long story, but we, we won the bid from the other hospitals in town several years ago. And after all the lawyer paperwork and whatnot, we're hoping to break ground on that soon. And so that's gonna be a different facility about 20 minutes down the road. And so uh, we've got contingency plans in terms of rotations once that hospital's built, um, which will hopefully be in the next year or two. So in terms of the program itself, it's a pretty standard program in terms of five years. It's one intern year and four urology years. We currently have 13 residents. In 2019, we were approved for an increase to three residents per year. So as of this month, we have three PGY1s, three PGY2s, and three PGY3s. And then subsequently, uh, we have two each from PGY4 to PGY5. And so uh, we've got uh, heavy on the juniors right now. And as we keep adding uh, residents each year, we'll have a full complement of 15 residents over the next couple of years. So our program is fully accredited with uh, the next review probably sometime in the near future. In terms of the rotation schedule, so the urology interns do six, month with, six months with us, which is great. And then we've sort of strategically picked six uh, general surgery months, uh, minimally invasive surgery where you can get some early robotic experience, uh, transplant uh, surgery, surgical oncology, who we work very closely with on the oncology side, uh, surgical ICU uh, rotation, which is important rotation, um, early on in your training, pediatric surgery as well, which works very close with their pediatric urology uh, group, and then acute care surgery. In terms of the PGY2 rotations, you do four months on the AU adult service, four months on the VA service, and four months on pediatric urology. As a PGY3, it's an even split between some research time, the AU adult service, and then the VA. And then on the PGY4 side, you split your time between pediatric urology, several months of sort of urogyne or female urology, and then the uh, remaining months is sort of a senior resident on the, uh, on the AU side. As of right now, we have two chief residents, so they're splitting their time equally between the VA and the main hospital at AU. And then we have in brackets, chief of Columbia County is some, at some point when we have to um, have a residency out there, it'll probably be the third uh, chief resident out there as well. In terms of the call responsibilities, the PGY1 uh, for general surgery call is in-house. Um, from the urology side, it's all home call. So there's always gonna be a PGY2 or a three taking the first call and then a PGY4 or five taking chief call. So you're, there's always two residents on call, a junior and a senior, and, um, and obviously attending on call as well. So you've got lots of backup on call. We do sort of weekend blocks. So if you do the math, you're on call for a we call it power weekend from let's say Friday to Monday, and then you've got the next several weekends completely off as well. We don't allow any moonlight during residency and we strictly adhere to the 80 hour work week. 
So in terms of the program strengths, we have a robust clinical experience and diverse faculty and residents and an aggressive organized didactic program with strong faculty participation. The first half of the year sort of guided towards the AUA in-service, which is in November. And then after Christmas, typically uh, journal clubs and other lectures from the faculty. Certainly we have a culture of investigation and research as well, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. So in terms of case volumes, you can see on the right is basically the sort of the national median for the major categories that you need to graduate. So pediatric urology, lap robotic, open endo, um, clinical volume. And you can see that sort of over the last decade or so, this is a general summary of our numbers. And you can just sort of taking a quick overview of it, you can see that we're above the median national uh, in pretty much every category. And that, that certainly was one of the justifications for adding our third resident uh, several years ago. This is a quick look at one of our recent graduates case logs. You can see on the right is the minimum number of cases you need to graduate. And in the green column is essentially the, this uh, uh, chief residence uh, totals over the five years. And so without belaboring the point, you can see that in most categories, uh, he was two to three, or even four or five times higher than what the, the minimum case uh, volume was. And so um, again, that, that gives us confidence that we have, certainly we know we have the volume to support three residents a year, which we've been awarded. And also I think it's important to note that this is not just numbers. This is the, the, especially in the senior years, the resident doing uh, 90 to 100 percent of the cases, including the big oncology cases as well. So it's important to get your numbers, but it's also as important to be heavily involved in these cases so that you're ready to practice after uh, your residency is done. So we'll go through the, the, the roster. Our fearless leader is Dr. Terrace, who's the Witherington Distinguished Chair in Urology. She did her general surgery residency at Duke, her urology residency at Stanford, the neurological oncology residency at Stanford. She'd been the chair since 2011. Uh, myself, I'm the residency program director and do urologic oncology. I'm a graduate of this program from 2016 and then did a two-year oncology fellowship in Toronto before coming back in 2018. Dr. Morgan Cerns, our chief of pediatric urology and the medical student clerkship director. He did his residency at Long Island Jewish as well as his pediatric fellowship as well. And he's finishing up his third year as well and runs a great PED service on the, on the, uh, the children's hospital side. Dr. Sharita King is our prosthetics and sexual medicine expert. Uh, one of my co-residents, she graduated the year before me in 2015, did a uh, sexual medicine fellowship in San Diego sexual medicine, and has really become one of the leaders, not in just the Southeast, but the country uh, for, for prosthetics and gives the residents a phenomenal experience. Dr. Pablo Santa Maria, is one of our general urologists. He's been with us for just over a year now. Uh, he did his residency at Emory and had been in private practice for many years. And so he's been with us doing a lot of our general urology and stone work over the past uh, 13 months. He's been an excellent addition to our team. Dr. Tom Dykes is our chief of VA uh, urology and uh, pretty much a jack of all trades. Uh, he did his residency at Tripler Army Medical Center and has been with us for just over five years and does a great job at the VA, bringing in several uh, uh, new uh, technologies such as um, uh, getting an XI at the VA as well as uh, uh, some other BPH, minimally invasive uh, management options. Dr. Matt Simmons is uh, also one of our hires from last year. He's been with us uh, just over a year as well. He's a VA reconstructive robotic surgeon. He's starting to do some time over here at AU as well. And he did his urology residency at the Cleveland Clinic. We have several exciting new hires that are coming on and should be here by uh, in the next probably four to six months, maybe eight months. Arlen Ahmad is a urological oncologist, one of my former co-fellows in Toronto. He did his urology residency in Albany. And as I mentioned, his uh, SUO fellowship in Toronto. Also, John DeCaro is a VA, gonna be one of our VA general urologists. Uh, he's been in private practice for several years as well. Unfortunately, that's the best quality photo we could find of him. So one of our first orders of business when he gets here is to get a better photo. Um, but he did his urology residency at Emory University. So we have two people coming in for sure. And we're, uh, we're also looking to hire additional faculty over the next probably eight to 12 months. We have some additional faculty that work very closely with, uh, as I mentioned in one of the previous slides, you do two to three months on female and pelvic medicine with Dr. Lanzer and Dr. Henley, who love having us on their service. And uh, we also have two powerhouse basic scientists, Drs. Venata and Bao Lokeshwar, and you have opportunity to work with them throughout the, throughout the five years, but specifically during the third year research elective. 
of course, we have people that are on the ground and taking care of our patients when we're running around like crazy. And these three ladies do a great job as our nurse practitioners, Lynn Almond, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> in the general urology clinic, Regina Canty in the cancer center and Miranda Wood in the pediatric urology clinic. And I did forget to add our, our, our newest one. I need to update this slide is Amanda, uh, who's also in the uh, uh, general urology clinic too. So we have two in the general clinic and one in the cancer center, one in the pediatric urology side. We have four awesome PAs at the VA. If anybody's worked in a VA, we know that the uh, clinics are insane. And so these four PAs do a phenomenal job, Brian, Valerie, Luann, and Lee, of, uh, of seeing a lot of the PSA follow-ups and, and just moving a lot of the volume through the VA that allows you to get to the operating room at the VA. Of course, we have phenomenal uh, admin assistants. Kim Maddox is amazing. She's our urology residency coordinator, and most of you have probably had some interactions with her in terms of getting set up for this uh, virtual conference. And we also have Eva McCord on the adult side and Susan Walker on the pediatric side. So going through our residents now, here's our new PGY-5s, brand new, uh, new minted uh, chief residents, uh, Matt Kaufman, graduated from Georgia Southern University in Statesboro, Georgia, and did his uh, medical degree uh, here at the Medical College of Georgia. Rashid Syed is uh, our other chief resident, he did his uh, bachelor's and MD at the American University of Beirut. And then he ran into me at the University of Toronto doing his master's and I convinced him to come south for his residency. So it's amazing how fast five years go by. Our PGY4s are Eric Thomas, uh, University of Florida for his bachelor's and master's and then Florida State for his uh, MD. And Katie Pertino, uh, who did her bachelor's and MD at Mercer University. Our PGY3s are Hunter Lambert, University of Mississippi through and through, bachelor's and, and MD. Uh, Tony Haifa did his bachelor's and master's at the University of Georgia and then his MD at the University of uh, Mercer University. And then Mike Oberly, uh, our South Dakota transplant uh, from Black Hill State University for his bachelor's and, and, uh, and medic, medical or his master's. And then DEO at the Edward v uh, School of Medicine. Our PGY2 class is Kyle Klein. I uh, did his bachelor's and master's uh, at Harding and Lipscomb University, respectively, and then finished his medical degree at the University of Arkansas. Mary Ma did her MD and PhD here at the Medical College of Georgia after finishing her bachelor's at the University of Georgia. And Kat Wallace did her bachelor's at Georgia Tech and her uh, medical degree at Medical College of Georgia. And last but certainly not least, our new brand new three week in, our two week in interns, a great class as well. Nate Taylor uh, from MCG uh, by way of University of Georgia, Weber Pike from University of South Carolina and USC Greenville and Carter Reed from Alabama. I, we still let him in even though we went to Alabama and did his uh, medical degree at the MD uh, Medical College of Georgia. So these guys are off and running as well. Look how clean those white coats are. So uh, looking at our conference schedule, uh, as I mentioned, it's a pretty aggressive conference schedule. We have a lot of interaction between uh, the residents and the faculty as well as some of our um, adjoining faculty as well. We do a pre-op conference weekly. We do a citywide radiology conference with some of the uh, private practice group in town uh, quarterly. We do a monthly M&M. We do a multidisciplinary cancer conference, which is an excellent conference two times a month as well. The journal clubs, as I mentioned, are typically after the, the holidays. Uh, and that's a monthly as well. The textbook chapter review is monthly and probably actually more than monthly <clears throat> as we lead into the uh, in-service in November. And then we have the faculty resident lecture reviews one to three times a week, especially as we get into the fall season before the in-service. We have several conferences that we attend and one of them is the Rinker Urology uh, Symposium, which is a local uh, meeting where the alumni come back. We typically have a national speaker come in and it's a great weekend, usually in September. We have the Mode Memorial Resident Student Research Symposium, which is in February, which aligns just before the Southeast section meeting in the AUA. So if somebody gets stuff accepted to those meetings, they can practice at this meeting. It's a local meeting where the residents and the students all present interesting research and case reports. We also attend the Basic Science meeting, the AUA annual meeting, which is in Vegas in September. The Southeast section meeting, which will actually be in Puerto Rico next year, and the Georgia Urology Association meeting, which is every fall in uh, Sea Island. And so one of the perks of being a resident here is as a fourth year, you get to go to Sea Island at the Cloister, which is one of the five-star resorts in Georgia. And it's a, it's a great weekend meeting. And a lot of the private practice groups come in and 
want to hire everybody that comes down from our program because they all need people to come join their practice in Georgia. So it's a fun weekend and a beautiful resort. In terms of the research experience, so there's dedicated time in the PGY three year. We obviously encourage this throughout the residency. We have a research coordination service. I mentioned the uh, Dr. Lokeshwar labs that they're welcome to have people come help them as well. We typically require one publishable paper per year. And then everybody, as I mentioned, presents at the research symposium every February. In terms of where people have gone over the last probably 10 to 15 years, roughly half have gone into fellowship, maybe a little less than half over the last three or four years with locations pretty much throughout the whole country. Um, since we are in the Southeast, a lot of people will stay in the Southeast. Southeast we've had um, a, a run of folks staying in, in the state, which is awesome for uh, collaboration and referral basis. Um, but you can see that they're pretty much based all over the country. In terms of the fellowships that people have achieved, um, in terms of FPMRS, uh, NYU Cleveland Clinic and UAB, Pediatric Urology at uh, Indiana, UCSF, Memphis and Pittsburgh, uh, Urologic Oncology at Memorial Sloan Kettering in Toronto, is Dr. Terrace Rashid uh, just matched at Toronto. Uh, so we've got quite the Toronto connection going on here, which is kind of interesting. Um, the sexual medicine prosthetics at uh, San Diego, with Dr. King, uh, UAB in Miami, infertility at the Cleveland Clinic and lap robotic at George Washington. So you can see from this list, the take home message is that if you wanna do a fellowship, we can get you the fellowship you want and probably where you wanna go. Um, we have uh, a lot of faculty that know people across the country. And so a lot of the, the fellowship matching is much different than what you guys are going through now. And a lot of it's word of mouth and, um, and, uh, and we've been very successful over the last 10 to 15, 20 years in getting people to the fellowships that they want. Several uh, resident benefits, health insurance, it's very inclusive, uh, disability insurance, malpractice insurance, coats and laundering, meals while you're on call, uh, three weeks of vacation, uh, certainly family and sick leave if you need it. And one thing we've had this year, we've realized we've had several successful couple matches. So Dr. Haifa, Oberly, and Reed have all successfully couple matched with their significant other. And so because urology is an early match, that can sometimes be challenging in terms of the off cycle between uh, the urology match and the NRMP match. So um, we've been very thankful that uh, these three fine doctors have been able to bring their spouses and, uh, and get into the programs that they uh, got into as well. We also have opportunity for uh, volunteering. Dr. Catherine DeVee started the IVU Med here in Georgia uh, roughly 25 years ago. And so this is basically a phenomenal opportunity. Um, this was pre-COVID uh, in terms of uh, being able to go to different areas of the world and see how things work in Haiti and, and, and in India. And so this is Dr. Carnes, one of our graduates from 2019 in Haiti and Dr. Uh, Harper literally probably a month before the pandemic happened in India in January, February of 2020. And so just getting an opportunity to see and help people in other parts of the world. And so we strongly encourage this as well. Hopefully this will be coming back in the next year or two after the, the pandemic. So this is slide 54. And I've actually talked about, haven't talked about the masters until now. So we have the golf tournament here every April. Uh, it's a fun time in the city. The city sort of becomes the center of the universe of the sports world for a week. And so uh, it's not the easiest to get tickets, but certainly over the course of your five years, there's ways to get on uh, to see the course and, and, and watch the tournament. So it's a lot of fun. We also have a lot of other uh, fun things to do in town. It's, it's uh, consistently one of the best places to live in the country. We've got the, uh, the Greenway, we've got the river, lots of outdoor activities. We've got the Augusta Green Jackets, which is the single A affiliate of the Atlanta Braves, beautiful ballpark at SRP uh, just across the river. And so lots of things to do when you're not in the hospital. I added this slide last year because Evans, which is the town just in adjacent to us, which I mentioned earlier in September of 2020 was voted by Money Magazine as the best place to live in America right now. And so uh, great quality of life here, as you can see, a lot of outdoor activities, great climate uh, for doing stuff pretty much 12 months of the year outside. So I promised that I would bring this picture back in the, towards the end of the talk. And this is what I call the three hour radius. Cause I think if you look at this, Augusta's in the middle here and there's lots to do within three hours of where we live. So if you look straight west, we've got Atlanta two and a half hours away. If you go up the road, just an hour and 15 minutes here in Columbia, Georgia, which is the home of the University of South Carolina, sorry, Columbia, South Carolina, the home of University of South Carolina. Uh, two hours and 30 minutes from here, we've got Charlotte, 
Um, you get to the coast here, you've got Myrtle Beach just outside the three hour radius. You've got Charleston, uh, Savannah, Hilton Head. The Sea Island meeting, which I talked about uh, earlier, the Georgia Urology is just down here, uh, about three and a half hours away. Uh, the, the Smoky Mountains are about three and a half hours away. So if you look at this area of the country, there's a lot of great weekend trips. And certainly during the one of your weeks of vacation, there's lots of opportunities to get um, to all these great places to visit. So I mentioned some of the uh, the outdoor activities and things to do. We got lots of running groups. There's always the, I guess, the half marathon, the Palmetto, Palmetto Beach Peach Half Marathon. Um, lots of biking on the Greenway and the, I guess, the canal. As you'd imagine, we've got lots of golf available, including uh, 16 public courses within about 20 minutes of us. Um, courtesy of Hunter Lambert, uh, disc golf is, is huge here. Appling, Georgia is apparently the national headquarters for disc golf. So thank you, Hunter, for that addition last year. Um, we've got lots of canoeing, kayaking, fishing, and boating, lots of festivals, uh, Fourth of July festivals, uh, the Greek Festival, Arts in the Heart Festival, and so a lot of, a lot of good, good things to do when you're not in the hospital. So to sort of summarize uh, this area, it's affordable housing. All, pretty much all of the urology residents own their own homes, which is probably not said for many programs in the country. This sort of immediate area, Augusta, Richmond County, Columbia County, is about 300,000 people. We sort of take about a 20 mile radius around us, including Aiken, South Carolina and some of the surrounding smaller towns in Georgia. We're at about 750,000 in what's called the Central Savannah River area. Um, healthcare is a huge uh, aspect of this town. We have Fort Gordon, uh, about 15 miles to the south of us. Savannah River site is a big industrial area about 20 miles away and club car headquarters are here as well. We've also have the Cyber Center National Headquarters as I mentioned before, the Savannah River and the Augusta Canal, uh, art and history, ballet and orchestra. We have a new performing arts center, which is beautiful. It's supposed to be opening soon, uh, delayed by COVID out in Evans, Georgia as well. Lots of playgrounds, golf, golf courses, tennis courts, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what to, to expect in the, in the area outside the hospital. So here's our 2021 uh, group picture. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen us on Twitter. Uh, as well as Instagram, we're pretty much on every social media platform. Uh, Dr. Terrace has a fabulous job of running that. And so we're excited that you guys are here tonight. Uh, we're looking to add three excellent residents again this year, and we're looking forward to chatting and taking any questions. Thank you. Great job, Zach. So I'm going to turn the recording portion.